Okay, let's look at how to do a simplified version using Illustrator. Basically, just a straightforward self portrait vector drawing. There's lots of examples of vector drawings, different ways you can go about it. I know you've heard me say the biggest deal about learning how to do this is organization, using layers, having a process. So that's the main part of what I'm going to show you. Um, let's start by creating a new file. Okay. It isn't critical what size it is, but, you know, as a default, let's just do letter size. Illustrator by default, unlike Photoshop, usually gives you CMYK instead of RGB. Now, in this case, it doesn't really matter, but, um, you know, at some point, yeah, you might be printing things for a portfolio, something like that. It doesn't hurt to do things in CMYK. On the other hand, RGB, if you're going to keep something digital on the computer and you think, my website's going to be on, you know, going to have my portfolio and I really don't need to worry about printing it out, then change it to RGB because you're going to get a better range of color. There's your out of gamut sign, which just means it won't print. Um, so, you know, personally, if I'm not really intending on using this uh, as a print piece, I'm going to do it in RGB. Okay. So, here's our artboard. Um, I would say it's important to have your layers open color, swatches, and uh, brushes too, probably. Um, this is really a freehand drawing, so the pen tool isn't involved. Although, if you're comfortable with a pen tool, you should use it. Um, but there's a, a lot of other places where the pen tool is really necessary. Uh, not sure it will be here. So, first thing, bringing in the file that you're going to work from, we're going to place that file. You're not going to copy it from Photoshop and paste it in Illustrator. You're not going to, like, drag and drop. You have to do a place. Placing means that the file is not actually embedded in Illustrator. The file still remains a Photoshop file, a separate file that's opened at the same time that your Illustrator file is, but it isn't embedded. You know, whatever size it is, putting that amount of pixels in Illustrator um, can slow it down, especially depending on how much RAM you have and so on. So it, it's a good idea to place it, but what that means is uh, you need to have a folder with all of your files, including the file that you're going to place or whatever files you're going to place, and you need to have them in a folder beforehand. Doing it afterwards, you're going to break the link because there's a link when you place a file between the Illustrator file and the file that you're placing. So wherever this file is located, okay, um, that's important that I be able to keep it in the same place. So let's Let's, before we do this, 
let's go to a finder window. I'm going to create a new finder window. And you can do something similar when you're doing this. Um, and first of all, uh, my file's on here, okay? And I'm going to create the same file for this class using my cell file, which is the one that I'm going to place. All right. And here is the 360. There's one I already started, just as kind of warm up. So I'm going to create a new folder, just titled, uh, let's say uh, this is 360 P1 B1. Okay. And, you know, Project 1, Part 2, Simplification, whatever, you know, just as long as you know what file is, that's what's important. So, let's, let's go back to this here, and I'll navigate to the file that I know I'm going to use, and if there's more than one if you, you're thinking about trying a couple um you know move all those files over there so you can copy it or you can just drag and drop it all right there we go so i'm set in terms of my file organization what i can do now also is save this right away save Go to the same place. There it is. Okay. And we'll title this self. Uh, and it's P1. And since simplification, I'm just calling B. And first attempt there. But how did I get there? The P1, B1. Okay. And all these, yeah, I just use the defaults. I mean, uh, we're not using fonts or anything. So, we should be okay. Now, let's go back to this. Okay, so, placing. We're going to place the file. It's in that folder. Think of this, you know, every piece that you do in Illustrator, um, as long as it's a working file and you may go back to it keep it as a folder now eventually you know an AI file you might turn into a PDF or something and it's independent but keep it as a folder as long as you know you might work on it more that way you have the originals and so, on. so I'm going to place this file to use and important, important warning, template box. You gotta check that. If you don't put this in as a template, uh, it basically, you know, doesn't function for you in the same way. You can't see it unless you turn off all the other layers. Uh, template is much easier to work with that's really important that box is not going to be checked so you got to remember to do that okay now when I place this this is a lot bigger in terms of inches so we have to size this down when you place a template it's going to be locked unlock it there's a little lock over here you can just unlock it you should lock it again so you don't put anything on this layer. Um, you should work if I hold the shift key down, but lately that's not consistently been working. So I don't know what's up with that. Um, so uh, about this size is fine. And I'm not using the whole photo, so it doesn't matter if it overlaps those other edges. And I'm going to lock it again. Okay. Now, 
We already have a layer one also. Basically, we're going to organize. I'm, I'm going to do um, just three colors to give you the idea. Now, you could do a lot more. Uh, I mean, you know, 12 is easy. Set up individual layers for individual colors. And you may have to do, you'll see when you get to it, you may have to do more than one layer for a color. So, layer one, I'm going to call my base color. Now, that's also, in this case, uh, going to be my lightest color. I'm going to work light to dark. That's another thing about this that you have to, like, think about, plan ahead. If I look at just the face, okay, generally speaking, light to dark probably will work a little bit better than dark to light. You want to work in some order. You can work um, from the middle out in both directions also. Just have a plan, a process, a structure to it. You need to organize it, okay? So that's my first, I'm going to create an, another layer now. This will be my mid-tone. Okay. Now, these colors for each layer, don't get confused uh, about, you know, what that means. Um, that's only the highlight color. So that when you draw things and they're selected, that's the color that you'll see. The point is, is that they're differentiated from one another. So you may, you know, there's times where you want to choose your own color so you can see it. Um, and you can always do that. You know, if you want something dark because you're working on a template, um, maybe we'll choose something darker, like dark blue. Okay, that might work better. All right. Then we create another layer for our darks. And our darks again, in this case, are going to all be the same color. Let's, in, instead of dark blue, Let's use um, a dark red or purple. We'll use burgundy. Okay. Now, your colors. One of the reasons that you're setting up this organization is so that your drawing retains flexibility. Um, you can set up three colors, your base color, mid-tone, and dark. You can do that ahead of time. But as long as you organize things, that's going to be a flexible thing. If you weren't doing this in an organized way and you just had hundreds of independent objects on one layer, your color would be very inflexible. Whatever you did that first time it would hard to it, it would be hard to like go back select everything of that color and change the color so um, what we can do is <clears throat> first our base color is very simple all I'm going to do in this case is use the shape tool a rectangle and the base color is just exactly like it sounds. That's what you're starting with. That's everywhere. So instead of like, for example, having white, we're going to have a base color. And so I'm going to click and drag this rectangle to about what I want for this self-portrait. Okay. Now that's the color I have right now, which is white. 
and I'm going to adjust that a little bit with a little bit of red. Uh, I mean a little bit of green, a little bit more blue. Yeah, so we want something a little yellow. A little bit of red in it. You know, it's much different than working with CMYK. Some people like working with CMYK because you have black and adding black is, you know, makes color mixing easier in some cases. Um, I don't know. I'm used to RGB too. So here, again, we have the same thing over here. This is our fill color and our stroke color. We don't want a stroke for now. So you choose this symbol, which is none. Okay. And we just have a fill color. Our fill color right now is this color that you see. Let's put just a, a little bit more color into it. And I'm going to push on the yellow a little bit more. Say there. Okay, now. Um, let's go down to our swatches. Alright. And we want to take this and save it as a swatch. And I'll save it right there. Okay. So that's our base color now if we go to midtone and make sure you know if if we were at this point like going to draw anything um, we'd want to make sure we deselect but we also want to deselect the background which right now the way this is set up it won't deselect by itself so you got to remember to do that. Okay. So, um, this, if you can see it, this we're going to adjust, we're going to push both of these, push this to a midtone, and save it. And at this point, again, because you have the, our organization, this is practically uh, arbitrary. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to stick with this, you know, what I'm generally working with in terms of color. Well, hey, I forgot this. This tablet is a touch tablet. I'm not always used to that. Okay. So there's the color, you know. Um, that's what we're looking at. And that's fine for now. So, again, I'm going to save that right there next to the base color. Okay? That big triangle we don't need. I mean, rectangle we don't need. Okay, now nothing is selected, so I'm not going to change anything that I've already done. And um, let's push things a little bit darker. Okay. Yeah, that's probably good. Um, we, we might need to adjust that. But I'm just going to put that there, light, middle, dark, okay? You can see those three right there. All right. So, basically, we have three layers, you know. Um, your base color <clears throat> is already there. You may need to do a little bit of drawing that you go back in over top of these three layers. 
and put in lightest lights that you draw over. But I, I'm gonna I'm gonna come back to that um, and let's talk about freehand drawing in Illustrator. So freehand drawing, we are going to use not the brush tool, but the pencil tool. Pencil tool is a freehand drawing tool. Um, in the old days, there used to be two vector programs. One was called freehand. Uh, none of you would remember that. You might not even have been born. Uh, but there was a program called freehand, and then there was Illustrator. So, the freehand tool, double click on the pencil once you find it. Um, it depends on how you draw, how you want this drawing to go, but you can control. Basically, vectors are made up of anchor points and straight lines or curves that connect them. So, when using a freehand tool, a lot of what's at issue is how many anchor points you put down. The anchor points are for change in direction. If you go towards highly accurate, you're going to have more anchor points, more change in direction. If you go towards smooth, less anchor points, less change in direction, more curves. So you know, again, it depends on what kind of drawing you want. I always tend towards accurate, more anchor points. The way we're drawing, we also want to fill pencil strokes as we draw. Um, we're filling them with the colors that we've already worked on. Keep selected. Well, no, that's not necessary. And in fact, it can kind of get in the way. Um, so uncheck that. Uh, there's some cases where you want that not in our case uh, don't worry about the option um, close paths when ends are within 15 pixels 15 pixels is a lot um, we do want to close all our paths as we're drawing that's really important but 15 pixels is a lot so I'm going to knock that down to 10 okay Edit selected paths just means when a path is selected, you can edit it. Well, yeah, we want that. Okay, and, but this is important. This is the other part of that. Within six pixels. Okay, so if something's selected, you know, and then you, you know, uh, Maybe you have multiple things selected for some reason. Uh, how much room for error? How much room do you do you want to have so that you're not editing by mistake? So um, selecting something within six pixels doesn't give you that much room. So we'll put this at 10 also. It just means, it also means when you click on something, you don't have to click exactly on it to edit it. You know, if you're within <clears throat> 10 pixels, you'll edit that thing. You know, that's selected. Okay. So, now, the actual drawing part. You, you really have to do this with a tablet. And the difference between a template and just putting an image in there and it not being a template is this. When you go to outline view, okay, everything that's printable on every layer, all the color disappears, all the fills, and all the outline color. So basically what you have is um, only the outlines of the vectors themselves in, you know, uh, basically the anchor points and the lines that connect them, the paths that connect them. So what that enables you to do is, is see what you're doing. You know, uh, so right now all we have is the base color down. 
So we're going from middle tone and working darker. Another thing I didn't mention, but it can always be helpful to, you know, maybe do a little bit of editing in Photoshop before you work on something here. I didn't demonstrate that, but typically I would do that. Okay, so your mid-tone can shift. It depends on what information you need to get down. Like this, in some other places, this same value or tone, I might not put down as middle tone, but here I kind of want this information. So I am going to call it middle tone. So I'm going to draw there. And uh, again, you can draw more generally or more specifically. And a lot of that has to do with just like um, how much you magnify what you're working on. Like, you know, if I'm looking at it on this level, I can get into a lot of really specific things. It's very hard to do that if you zoomed out. So let me take my mid value, which is right here. That's my mid value. Remember, you got to be on the right layer too. Before you do anything, check what layer you're on. We want to be on mid-tone. You're drawing basically everything that's mid-tone or darker. You don't have to draw around your darks. I, I see people do that. Like, never fails. But it doesn't really make any sense. So draw everywhere that's mid-tone or darker. Connect the vectors as you're drawing. Always make a shape. You, you don't want to like uh, have open paths hanging out there. So I'll just connect shapes. And in this part where it, it's all going to be like overlapped anyway, we'll do that right now. See, you know, that's just for this line. I'm drawing this shape. Um, and, you know, uh, this level of specificity is kind of in the middle somewhere. You, you, you can get more specific than this. Okay, I'm going to keep my shapes overlapping. That was kind of like a mess up there. Let's take a look. Go to preview. Boom. You know, and, and again, everything is on the mid-tone layer, right? So let's go back to outline. Um, let's go in further, okay? You want to be really specific? You can be, okay? So if, if I want to be really specific, I can be. And I have seen students do like uh, pixel specific drawings. Okay, you see the difference there between that and these lines? There, there is a difference. And it shows in the overall drawing. So, I mean, it, it, if you want to kind of get things really interesting in terms of, like, how specific you can get with a simplified drawing, and, and it, this really doesn't have anything to do with the fact that it's simplified. I mean... A photograph by itself is already simplified compared to like what you see in life but you know this 
compared to say what I was doing before has a bit more information but it, it it's still you know in the end with three colors or four colors or whatever it's going to be very simplified now there's disadvantages to being this specific too um, you can kind of get lost in the detail and the problem becomes is that you end up with fragments instead of more general things you know so there there, there can be kind of uh, pitfalls to you know being this close so I'm gonna back off a little to say about there you know and um, draw kind of around in the scale that I was drawing before that would probably make a bit more sense I, I mean, you know, again, it, it depends on what you're going for. Um, what kind of look you want. You know, it, it's not easy, especially in this case. Some of these decisions might seem almost like they're arbitrary and sometimes they kind of are but I would say just try and be consistent you know within an area like this you just want to try and be consistent that's the main thing stylistically try and be consistent try and also, be attentive, focused. Um, I can't say whether you should be relaxed or not. Sometimes that helps. But, again, it, it does take attention, focus, and concentration to trace. And this is basically tracing, but to trace well. Uh, these edges matter. Um, all your information is in every edge that you draw. Since we have very little happening tonally. Only a couple of color changes. Very little. So everything is about the lines that you draw. So uh, I did a little bit more there. Um, and just to know, you know, when I say try to be consistent, what that means is um, even when you have a line that seems a little bit smoother, you want stylistic consistency to start to really become a part of your work. So that means you don't let the source dictate to you how to draw but you know your drawing kind of supersedes that and what that means in my case is even when I see information that's a little bit smoother than other information I still want that irregularity in the line you know that gives a certain sense of organic complexity um, and so whenever I'm drawing like this even if it does seem like you know a, a little bit of a simpler line I'm gonna make sure that you know I'm, I'm varying the line that I'm drawing um, and that might mean little squiggles or whatever but 
The other thing worth noting is that there may be places where you really stretch what your lightest tone is, you know, where it appears, where your middle tone is differentiated from the lighter tone. Like, this probably would be, you know, my lightest, the base color. But if I want a little detail to be captured, I've got to, I've got to use middle tone. You know, I've only got three to work with. So there'll be some variation on what mid-tone is. You know, there's, there's things that I'm drawing on this side, which is the white side of the face, that if I'm doing the whole face, um, the other side of the face, you know, it, it would probably, the, the same tones would all be the base tone, the lightest tone. So, the way we've developed this, basically, uh, <clears throat> we can adjust this color pretty easily. And as you can see, there's a lot of paths there, a lot of sublayers. You would, you know, unless you do the organization, you would have to select them all individually. So the organization is really important. Um, if I wanted to adjust my color, I could just click on this layer, click on the little circle here, which selects everything on that layer. And then, uh, let's see if I want to lighten it a little bit. I'm going to change it to something a little duller. And this has been switched to CMYK. So actually having the black is helpful if you want to go darker or lighter. But we can adjust this more further as we get down the road. Um, okay, so, let's, uh, deselect that, okay? I'm just going to go to deselect. And let's go to the darks. Nothing is selected. want to make sure of that. Um, again, here's our light, mid, dark. I'm going to select the dark, right? We can always push that darker. Go to view, outline. And again, um, remember, you're going to decide what is that darkest dark uh, on the basis of like what you need to bring out. I got to, since this was switched off, I got to go back to this. Fill new pencil strokes. Don't keep selected. Close pass. 10 pixels. Edit select the path. 10 pixels. Click OK. All right. So make sure you're on the right layer before you start drawing. Now you remember I did mention that you may have to create another layer to go back in and put highlights in with that base color. And that's things like this, that you don't, don't really necessarily have, want to have to work around, but um, you can go back and do. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go a little bit further with some darks, right? And again, uh, it, it it's really a judgment call to say where you're going to put a dark, where you're not. 
um, especially with something like this and only working with three colors it, it's difficult you know I can already tell how I'm going to change the dark it's got a little bit too much saturation compared with the mid-tone and the base color let's go back to outline so it's very subjective to say especially you know in an area of the face that really we don't have a whole lot of dark darks you know where I'm going to go back in and put a darker dark um, might have little spots there but again this would be different on the other side of the face where there's more contrast and let's adjust this now I'm going to go into my darks select them so they're all selected I'm going to go down on the color in general and we'll see how this looks that's much better you know, I might even, especially with something like this, might even lighten everything, considering the photograph that I'm starting with, the source. Um, in which case, you know, I go back to the midtones again, maybe lighten them. and then go back to the darks again and lighten them. Yeah, that's a little bit tighter. So we'll go back to outline view and uh, you know, another thing that's useful when you're looking at something like this, those lines will start to get in the way. So if, if you feel like you need to see the image, you know, turn off the other layers and look for where are my darkest darks just looking at the image in this case. I might pull out a dark here, you know, um, another dark there. And again, that, that can be useful. And particularly even down here, I might put in a few more. my darkest darks. Let's turn those other layers back on. Yeah. And that's useful. Okay. Alright, so don't forget if you do adjust your base color, midtone darks, don't forget to put them down here with your swatches and you might even want to get rid of the old ones um, it, it's just something to keep in mind because if if we go back like let's say right now we're going to go back add a couple of highlights on a new layer on top of everything you want to have the correct colors here that's easiest you can always click on something you know on your artwork but it's nice to have them in the swatches um, so let's create a new layer and we will call this base color as it is our base color base color 2 okay 
and um, we want to make sure we're working with our base color so we'll select that go back to view outline draw these couple of shapes in you know just like that and that okay and go back to view preview okay so uh, you also want to keep in mind if you adjust your base color here you need to do the same with this layer so you would adjust this color save that to the swatches then click on the base color second layer and change everything to the color on the swatches keep in mind that you should save your swatch library particularly if you're going from one computer to another you should save it anyway save it as an AI file the other thing is uh, and I don't know if this is something you'd want to do in one particular place I mean what I'm talking about is softening shapes if you wanted to soften shapes it really should be a part of stylistically whatever you're doing with that particular art work but um, with something like this it, it really wouldn't lend itself probably to the style but you can take any shape on here and go to effect stylize and feather and what that does is it softens the edge of the shape and in this case this is a really small shape so when you see the preview a one point feather is going to really dilute that shape now if you have a, a larger shape and again it depends on the way that you draw it it wouldn't work well in my drawing but if you had a larger shape and you wanted to do the same kind of thing like like here um, again you could soften the edges so from this point you would keep working on it or I would keep working on it um, we want to do a save as we're going make sure you're saving it to the right place and when you finalize a file um, you, you probably want to save your layered version as is but also do a save as and save it as a PDF which will basically be a flat version um, that doesn't need any of the images fonts anything else with it uh, you can go through the settings here um, again as opposed to using a JPEG it's much better to use a PDF you can use compression choose not to use compression um, and particularly if you have a really large file with say a number of raster images used as templates something like that um, you would probably want to compress to some extent and save the PDF so you know for this particular project make sure you save your layered version that's important for me to see it's also important in case you want to go back into a drawing and work on it further and again you have until the end of the semester to do that also save a PDF that's easy to view and, and get used to doing that um, 
it, it's good for the inclusion of raster images that you might have used and also fonts that you might have used that when somebody else views it they don't have the same font on their computer in a PDF that won't matter.